So we're doing this uh, cast iron blower housing, the end cap here. That's a piece that cracked out in like three or four pieces. What we could salvage, we did. We clamped the aluminum bar underneath there for alignment, but also once the aluminum bar is warm and properly heated for some heat retention here, you can see how the moisture goes away. That means we got about 200 degrees there. We're at about 400 degrees where we start the joint between 250 and 400. I mean, it's not an exact science. You see, we chose not to put that piece in that has some cracks all the way through. And this one is just a tiny little piece, maybe like quarter inch thick, half inch wide, three quarter inch tall. And then rather than putting those pieces back in, we're going to fill that in with wire. Here you see the wire we use as a rock mount Jupiter wire. Initially I was a little bit leery about it. It comes on a five pound spool at like $170 a pound. So that's like an $800 spool. But a buddy of mine said it's really worth it. It welds almost like regular MIG wire. And I mean, at the end of the deal, I was blown away how amazing this all worked. We're using the Propulse 300 here uh, with that said Rockmont Jupiter wire. And um, of course, we didn't have a program for it, so we were kind of just winging it. And it ran beautiful, it, it worked beautiful. We used 75 25 gas on it. And um, yeah, just see. Just see how it all sh electrode positive. See how it all shakes out. See it all worked um, between some preheat, not getting carried away, not heating the entire part. You know, normally if I would do a part like this, like the old school way, I would go ahead and preheat the whole part evenly, heat it intermittent between passes, then post heat the entire part evenly to pre prevent any stress cracking, then wrap it in a ceramic blanket or bury it in sand. And here we kind of just try to do the minimalistic approach here because supposedly that wire is so good and it was better than good. It really, it really knocked it out of the park. So some back gouging action here now that the front is kind of put in place making sure that we have all our bases covered and get a good weld like 80 90 percent ideally 100 percent weld there you see the results where I grounded as much as I had to where I could see the weld from the other side to really get a full weld on this. Dude, almost no inclusions. This shit well, it's so nice.
This shit is so awesome. You don't know how awesome this is. I'm watching. No, you have no idea. You don't know how much pain in the ass it is normally. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I I'm standing here and I can't believe it. If they would have had this shit when I was a kid, so here you heard and saw some real time, not sped up, not slowed down, uh, what it takes to weld it. You also see the, you can hear the sound, so you know what it needs to sound like. That was using that Rockmont Jupiter wire with 7525 gas. And then here we're clamping this this way one more time, and that's where we're using this aluminum to also act as a separator where this wire will not stick to aluminum so at this point we can go ahead and fill that missing piece these two little chunks we saw in the beginning in and go ahead and build this whole corner up so we can grind it in later on redrill the holes recut the threads and fix everything so here we're gonna do some minimal but really minimal post heat just to get a little bit temperature in that corner and restore it. We're not even gonna heat the whole piece. And then um, we're gonna wrap it in a welding blanket just so like I could say I tried. I'm not really sure that that's even really required, but that's what we chose to do. We didn't want to do the job twice. And then after that, the real work is gonna start. So take a look at how beautiful this really looks. I mean, just amazing and how it was flowing like minimal to no peening, minimal preheat, minimal post, minimal everything. And it turned out so nice and so and so smooth. I mean the way how it just ran, just like regular regular steel wire, it's unbelievable. So now the real grind is gonna start. You know, is there's two kinds of people, there's welders and there's grinders. And sometimes even if you're a welder and even if your welds look nice, for prep work you still have to use a grinder. And for finishing stuff, if it has to be like a machined surface, unless... I'm not saying the grinder is going to produce a machined surface here, but 
unless you drop this off by your buddy with a machine shop and want to pay him a couple Mr. Franklin and you just have to like blend it in close enough then um, there is some blending and grinding to do so I'm gonna have Tim grind and grind and grind some more and then when he's done then I get to do some finishing touches and then after that then we're gonna come back to restoring again stuff that you could drop it off at the machine shop for but the customer was in a rush it needed to get done so we did what we needed to do to get him back up and going so checking the test fit on the tap there on that hole and then uh, just cleaning stuff up cleaning the holes up that needed to be cleaned up cleaning up spatter cleaning up any contamination that was in there that's the hole I really meant to clean up the other one was a function of checking the fit making sure I really had the right tap and everything and then after those are done then we need to open up the through holes that we partially filled with weld yeah that's I'm checking for squareness here and I gotta say I got a couple shots here let me put those in of where you can see hardly any light under that ruler it 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 came out really nice So here's mag drill time. We got the right bit there. I believe this was an 11 16 may have been a 5 8 And um, I'm lining the holes up. I'm re-drilling the holes that got partially closed with weld just because. And then there was one hole that was completely eliminated from that double broken piece in the beginning, you remember, with the hairline crack through that we did not reuse. That's this hole right there that needs to be completely re-bored and restored. So that is one fresh hole and then the other ones just got touched up and cleaned up. Like this one here for example. And then when those were done, then um, after that just to finish it off, I'm switching to the chamfering bit and just, I saw the other holes had just a small chamfer on the top so I'm switching to the chamfering bit and then just uh, touching it up just a little bit to make it all look the way it's supposed to. So now it's time to flip it over and grind the back side. We haven't done that yet. Make sure that everything is nice and flush there so when the new when the piece is bolted back onto the blower that the bolts have a flush surface to sit on, not uneven with weld, but we filled it in so it all looks nice and clean. And then I have a few pictures here of the finished product. All overall I would call this repair an absolute success. It all looks good and it's been in service already for several weeks now. I'm lacking a little bit behind here with the video editing. It's holding up real good. There I didn't completely fill it but it was good enough for what it had to do and customers happy, machine works, job well done.